Okay. We're, so we're going to start the quiz, not quiz. Um, so hopefully you've already done this, practiced it, tried it, worked on it with a group of people, did it in class, asked questions about it, and this is just a refresher. All right. So what is the gauge pressure at A in terms of the given variables? So we have our point A, we have Y1, it looks like. I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, we're going to call it Y1 here. We have a length going up at this angled tube, and the oil is going um, all the way up to here. And we that tube is at an angle theta, and it has a density um, rho L. So what model and tool are we going to use? Well, we have a manometer. Um, if you have a nail, you might as well use a hammer, right? But more specifically, the simple manometer rule relates changes in heights with fluids to changes in pressures in a, um, in a static system, right? So our assumptions are static system B density is equal to a constant and C um, rho is equal to a constant. Oh, I wrote that again. Gosh. What I meant to say was um, we can neglect the density of air. Great. Okay, so um, if we're going to use the simple manometer rule, where do we want to start? Let's start with on the right hand side here. So we have P atmospheric. Rule number one, we write down that, um, start on either side and write down the pressure and then move through the fluid, subtracting if we go up and adding if we go down. So we're going to have P atmospheric plus the height, not the length, but the height. So the height here is actually going to be this, which is the sine of theta times L1 times rho g liquid. And that's going to be equal to Pa, right? So um, if we want to use gauge pressure, we can actually write that here. Gauge pressure, um, we can make that zero and we can say that Pa is equal to um, uh, rho L G times sine theta L1. Yep, that's our answer. Pretty easy, right? Um, the reason we're talking about this, though, is I want to get into the I dip your toes, if you will. Um, and that's a colloquialism, if you haven't heard it before, uh, like you're sitting near some water and you want to see how cold it is, like a lake or a river, you dip your toes in it just to see before you jump in. So we're not jumping into uh, sensitivity and measurement theory and experiments, but we're going to start, okay? And so um, I'm giving you a bonus question, and that is, what is the sensitivity of the system? Where the sensitivity is the derivative of the indicator with respect to the property you care about. So... Um, uh, a good example of this might be uh, a scale that you use to measure weight, right? So um, if you step on it and the dial rotates or, or some indicator moves, you want to know what is the amount of change of the indicator, be it a number on a LCD screen or a pointer that moves back and forth. Um, at, um, in response to an a, a infinitesimal change in your weight. Okay? In that case, our indicator for our manometer is L. This length here, because as our pressure increases, our length will increase. And our property that we're worried about is our pressure, Pa. So, 
Um, if we want to take the derivative of this with res uh, derivative of l with respect to uh, p a, this is uh, the thing I would do first to solve for l. So we're going to do that. We say l is equal to p a over rho l g sine theta, and then we take the derivative of it. d l d p a is equal to one over rho l g sine theta. So here's a bonus bonus question and I want you to think about this for a long time. How would you increase the sensitivity? So this is equal to the sensitivity. How would you increase the sensitivity? How would you increase DL DPA? Hint, everything's on the bottom of this equation so you make this stuff smaller. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about it. Um, one, decrease G. That's very impractical, but if you went to the moon, I can tell you what, your manometer would be more sensitive. Uh, where else is G decreased? I guess on mountains, right? Yeah. Or maybe not. Is it higher on mountains because you have more material between you and the Earth? I can't. I can't ever remember. Um, two, you can decrease your density of your fluid. This is why most. Mon well, there's two reasons why mo most manometers are use oil. One is because the density is less than water. Um, the second is that oil is less volatile, so that it um, doesn't evaporate. Right. So you uh, don't have to worry about evaporation changing the heights of your fluids and corrupting your measurement. So you can de decrease the uh, density. In three, you can um, decrease theta. Right? Because sine of theta as it approaches zero is zero and sine of theta at 90 degrees, if this were straight up and down, would be one. So as we make theta less and less, we um, increase the sensitivity of our, sensitivity of our, of our manometers. Which is why, if you ever looked at some, um, if you ever find uh, an old school wind tunnel, I know um, Dr. Burge, I think he teaches an aero, aero lab or something like that where you go to the wind tunnel. And I believe he has a manometer set up where they have just banks and banks of tubes lined up next to each other. Each tube connected to a flexible, flexible rubber tube that then goes to some part of, let's say there's like a wing, right? It connects to a tube in here, which then connects to some part of the wing, right? So you can measure this tube eventually opens up to some part of the, the wing surface. And then they almost always, if you looked at this from the side, um, mount this on uh, a pivot here so that you could pivot these, uh, these tubes at an angle and increase the sensitivity by decreasing this theta. So this is, that's that pivot right there. So you have all these tubes where you have the, the fluid, which is increasing and decreasing in height based on the pressure. And usually it gives a very striking um, variation of pressure because if you're smart, you arrange the tabs so that like they're, they're in this order and you can actually watch the pressure change as the profile, along the profile. Um, but then if you change the angle, you can increase the sensitivity. Now there are downsides, right? Because um, any tube is actually finite in diameter. And if the fluid is, an a is at an angle, it will start um, taking up more and more area at the, at the cross section. And at a certain point, it becomes real difficult to figure out exactly what the height is, the length that you're actually measuring. Are you measuring here? We're here, and where is here? Because this is a round tube, and so the meniscus is, is curving it. Um, and so that can become quite difficult. So there's a limit to how low you can put this angle and, and practically measure changes in pressure. But these manometers can be quite sensitive. They can be quite sensitive and quite useful as a cheap way to measure lots of different pressure. Lots of different pressures. Uh, that was hopefully a... a 
Brief introduction to measurement science. Remember, sensitivity is always the change in indicator over the change in property, and you always want to increase the sensitivity by having a greater change in the indicator for a given change in the proper property. Cool. All right. That's the end of manometers.